On the outside looking in, I know everything looking sweet, but it's some struggles and some pain you can't see. It's been hard on me, not to mention all them nights with no sleep, trying to figure out how the fuck we gon' eat. Shall we finally eat? If you have the DMs of me messaging you, I'll give you a million dollars because that's Cap. Yeah, because she's yeah. here. Like, she's not here. She's not here, yeah, we're here. I don't know, maybe you want to like squash the beef. He's a nice guy. Using my face to disrespect the, 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 the crew. By now, we've all probably heard of Perkyo. If we don't know who he is, at the very least, we've seen a picture of Little Dirk with somebody who must be his clone. But who is the dude exactly? Where did his career start? Most importantly, what's going on between him and 6 9 Things have gotten pretty insane recently, but hopefully the guy isn't in any actual danger. Not a whole lot is actually known about Perkyo's personal life or where he actually comes from, but we do know that he's significantly younger than Dirk. It's also hard to say how long he's actually been making content for because he deleted a lot of his videos off TikTok back in early 2022. Ever since then though, his content has gained a pretty massive following. As far as the record shows, the first TikTok he has up was from January 3rd, and it's just a video of him playing a game of soccer. It's gotten about 180,000 plays in the meantime. Like we said though, it's definitely not like he didn't have a following before then. People were still checking him out before then. He hadn't exactly blown up yet though. About a month later to the day, on February 4th, he posted another TikTok that had absolutely done some numbers. This is one that seriously put him over the edge. This one got 2 million plays in just a matter of a couple of months. While this is the one that put him on the map, it doesn't even compare to the level of fame he'd reached just a month later. In March of this year, he made a simple decision that would likely change his life forever. He decided he was going to go blonde, now sporting long locks that looked pretty similar to Dirk's. It wasn't long before his followers pointed out to the guy that he was now a certified Dirk doppelganger. Even in the case of the Drake lookalike, it's not like the resemblance is spot on or anything. It's close, but you could definitely tell who's who if you had the two of them in a photo together. In the case of Perkyo and Dirk, it's uncanny. Like, the only thing that even differentiates them a little bit is the fact that Dirk looks just like a little bit older. He posted a couple of TikToks playing with the idea of doing something with the fact that he looked like Dirk, but it wasn't a huge thing until the end of March when he posted his most viral TikTok to this date at this point. From here on out, Perkyo went viral, and this caught the attention of a lot of people. Some of those people encouraged him and really took a liking to the whole thing, while some others, like 6 9 had shady plans in mind. On March 26, he posted a video with the caption, meeting Lil Dirk finna be like, which managed to garner a couple of million views in just a month. This is really where the whole thing took on a life of its own, and he really was just the Dirk doppelganger we know today. Whether this would turn out for better or for worse in the long run is really anyone's guess at this point and only time will tell. On April 5th, the unthinkable happened, and Dirk was finally made aware of Perkyo's existence. He posted a video with the caption, Oh my god, what happened to Smirk? This one got almost 6 million views in a month, and it even managed to attract the attention of other rappers in the game, who ended up posting in the comments to react to the whole thing. Lil Yachty was one of them. On April 7th, Perkyo went viral again. YouTuber King Sid and Perkyo put on a prank at a mall in Florida. Perkyo showed up and pretended to be the real Dirk, interacting with fans, taking photos, and signing autographs. This one also did numbers, getting about 1.7 million views. Shortly after that, Dirk and Perkyo would hit Instagram Live together, where they were more or less meet for the first time. At this point, most of the internet was familiar with Perkyo. Finally, on April 19th, Perkyo and Dirk met in person and ended up taking a picture together. While you could definitely tell who's who by looking at the picture, it really is almost crazy how much they look like each other. For Dirk, it must be looking like back in time for yourself about 15 years ago or something. This must have been one of the high points of Perkyo's short career as a Dirk lookalike. But unfortunately for him, being little Dirk has some downsides. Before we get into what went down recently, we gotta talk about the ethics of this whole thing a little bit. When you take on a persona of somebody like Dirk, you gotta be prepared for what comes with that. See, Dirk has some major history on the streets. He comes from 300, which is affiliated with O Block, which is part of the Chicago Black Disciples gang. They are bitter rivals of the GD. This is a bitter rivalry that goes back for generations. To make matters worse, this isn't Dirk's only beef. He's also got enemies from outside his home turf. After the passing away of King Vaughn at the hands of Quando Rondo's crew, Dirk found himself embroiled in a beef with the NBA Youngboy. Nothing too major has come out of the Youngboy beef, but the rhetoric surrounding the whole thing has been pretty spicy. That means that now, there are two major reasons for Dirk to be watching his back. This brings us to the third major beef that Dirk is finding himself in the middle of. This one's kind of weird, cause for real, it's not even about Dirk. Six 
6ix9ine has been sticking his nose in business that isn't his for a long time, and Dirk's life is no different. 6ix9ine had major beef with Chief Keith back in the day, and that somehow ended up spilling over to make Dirk the target. To be honest, no one can really say where exactly this part of the beef started. There was a Chief Keith track that some people interpreted to be a diss towards 6ix9ine, but it's definitely not clear. All that is clear is that 6ix9ine pretty much flew off the handle at Keith shortly after that track dropped. He didn't just call out Keith though, he called out pretty much all of Chicago. 6ix9ine had some words, he said, Nobody give a fuck about what y'all niggas did three years ago. I don't think y'all niggas understand what I was talking about in my last video. What y'all did four years ago, three years ago, and living y'all rap, y'all don't do. I know that personally. He continued his tirade by saying, What y'all gonna give me, 48 hours? Yo, wait two months, yo, this thing gonna die? Where? Where I'ma die? Fuck Chief Keith. fuck Lil Reese. Fuck all them niggas. Fuck y'all niggas talk about nigga. This fucking Treyway, nigga. Treyway? I bet y'all niggas put up to New Jersey now, nigga. Jersey ain't my city, but my brothers is there. You heard me? Things didn't stop there. There were a ton of disses back and forth. 6ix9ine took Chief Keef's baby mama out to Gucci store and spent a bunch of money on her. Was just generally being disrespectful as he could be. The final straw in this beef was when 6ix9ine allegedly tried to put a hit out on Chief Keef. Of course, he was unsuccessful, but that doesn't mean the situation was any less crazy. Keef moved out to LA and Glow basically went its own way, separate from anything that was going on in Chicago. Did 6ix9ine give up on causing trouble though? Of course not. Instead, he targeted Lil Durk. He picked on him pretty relentlessly, even going so far as to mock the death of his brother, D-Thang, calling Dirk out for not sliding to get revenge. The thing is though, maybe Dirk did get revenge. We really don't know because no one's real privy to that kind of information unless you're actually out in the streets. What we do know is that Lil Durk doesn't really post this type of stuff on any of his social media accounts. He's smart enough to know that he should move in silence so that he doesn't end up snitching on himself or get put in a position where he has to snitch on any of his homies. That situation sounds kind of familiar. I don't know. In addition, when King Von passed, once again, 6ix9ine was there to call out Dirk for not sliding for his homie once again. But how does any of this involve Perkyo though? Well, unfortunately, he was made a target by 6ix9ine. Just last month, Perkyo linked up with the rapper. The details surrounding the whole event are a little murky, but someone isn't being hunted about the whole thing. We can't tell which direction the cap is coming from just yet, but we definitely got a hunch. According to Perkyo, he was set up. He says the YouTuber Steve Will Do It reached out to him about doing a collaboration in New York, and Perkyo immediately jumped at the chance to work with such a big YouTuber. When he got there, they went outside to film, and he saw 6ix9ine, who he didn't know to expect. That's when someone came out with a jacket, which they draped over his shoulders. In the video of the whole thing going down, you could see that Perkyo was physically shaken and visibly upset. The dude who put the jacket on him has his arm around his shoulder, and he's definitely applying pressure because Perkyo refuses to put the jacket all the way on. 6ix9ine can also be heard saying, just put the jacket on. After everything went down, Perkyo took to socials to explain what had happened. He says he was completely ambushed and had no way to know what was going to get going down once he got there. He also said that he had no idea 6ix9ine was going to be involved. He also made it clear that there was no way he would ever work with 6ix9ine after meeting Dirk. He says that he hung out with all of them and the OTF crew and they showed him a lot of love, so there's no way he would snake on them like that. 6ix9ine and Steve Will Do It, on the other hand, are telling an entirely different story. Steve Will Do It said at the very least, Perkyo was lying and that he was never involved. He straight up said that if that's what went down, Perkyo needs to post to DMs. So far, no messages have been posted by Perkyo. 6ix9ine also spoke on the whole thing recently, and so did DJ Academics. DJ Academics has a weird relationship with 6ix9ine, and it's fair to say that they're a lot friendlier than most other people are with 6ix9ine. He posted a video in which he said that if 6ix9ine actually did set up the dude, it wasn't a cool move since Perkyo isn't involved in any gang activity. He's just a civilian. Then again, it seems like DJ Academics might have completely flipped his opinion around to the other side after 6ix9ine posted the video. The video shows money being exchanged between two parties. DJ Academic said apparently this footage of Perkyo, aka fake Lil Durk, taking into account in the 7K he was promised for doing a video with 6ix9ine. 6ix9ine chimed in to say, caught in 4K, your manager took the money, you sold your soul for 7K while getting caught in 4K, and then went on live lying still claiming OTF. This would be some serious evidence if what 6ix9ine says is true, and it might end up seriously harming Perkyo's reputation. And and his friendship with Dirk. To be completely fair though, while 6ix9ine and DJ Academics are really quick to jump on Perkyo for getting paid, there's nothing here. That's just a video of some people passing money around. The guy in the video is apparently just Perkyo's manager. 6ix9ine isn't in the video. Perkyo isn't in the video. It's just kind of a mess. 
Like, what is this supposed to actually prove? This took place before everything went down, and there's nothing that says Perkyo knew what was going to go down once he went to the video shoot. There's no contract or anything either. If Perkyo was totally cool with the whole thing and had no issues about working with 6 9 after getting so close to OTF, then why was he shaking the entire time they were filming? Why does 6 9 have to have one of his cronies literally hold the jacket onto Perkyo's shoulders? If he was really working with 6 9 he would have thrown the jacket on and looked like he was actually excited about it, not like he was terrified for his life. At the end of the day, while Perkyo should have been prepared for this kind of thing to happen to him while he's impersonating Dirk, it's still not cool that things went down like this. 6 9 should not be putting dude in the middle of a gang beef. The kid's young. He avoided getting involved in this kind of thing for all his life up until now for a reason. And also, it's just corny for real. 6 9 will do anything for clout. This whole thing just goes to show the lengths that 6 9 will go when he's trying to stay relevant and people are not here for it at all. Someone said, nah, y'all really putting this kid's life in danger for what? Shake my head. Another user said, we never took the money, y'all gave that to someone else. Yet another fan said, we're 6 9 in the video. Remember, he thought he was doing a video with the other bra. Just to clarify, it's not like I'm cherry picking these quotes to make Perkyo look good. It really does seem like nobody is buying 6 9s account of what happened. But what do y'all think about this one though? Did Perkyo actually say snake on Dirk like that, or is 6 9 100% captain? Should academics have flipped like that just to protect the relationship with 6 9 or should he have asked for some real evidence before he formed his opinion? Let us know what you think down below in the comments. I know everything looking sweet, but there's some struggles and some pain you can't see. It's been hard on me, not the legend, not them nights with no sleep. Trying to figure out how the fuck we gon' eat, now we finally eat.